Recently, I watched a video by Jeff Nipper discussing a way of training that might be more optimal for hypertrophy. And I won't lie, but I was rather surprised by the research and I wanted to discuss it here today. So let's get right into it. Hey everyone, welcome to Science Based Fitness. My name is Adam, thanks for clicking on today's video. Today we're talking about long length partials. So I love Jeff Nippert's content and I want to piggyback on top of that. Now, if you haven't seen his original video, I'm going to link it down below in the description so you have a better idea of what's going on here. But what is a long length partial? Okay, so here you see me doing a cable crossover or a fly. A normal rep would travel through a full range of motion like this here. But in a long length partial, we'd be doing about a quarter to half a rep while the muscle is in the lengthened position. So on this exercise here, it would look something like this. So what's the deal? Is this actually a more optimal way to train? Well, yes, if your goal is hypertrophy. Of course, like everything, there is some nuance. So let me explain. For individuals looking to get bigger, a systematic review on this topic, comparing full range of motion to long length partials, gave the nod to long length partials being more beneficial for hypertrophy. Even stating partial range of motion at long muscle lengths result in greater muscle hypertrophy, partial range of motion at shorter muscle lengths, and full range of motion. And for example, a short length partial would be something like the guy at your gym throwing 300 pounds on the bench press doing a quarter of a rep at the top and claiming he benches 300 pounds. Now that clearly doesn't bother me, it doesn't get under my skin at all. But does this mean that long length partials are the only type of training we need to use going forward? Of course not. And the study even suggested that using full range of motion is still a good default way to train. Since at the end of the day, the added benefits are still rather small, we need to remember that not everyone's trying to train to maximize hypertrophy. And the researchers even mentioned for most people, use a range of motion that will best translate to your specific need. And I think a good example of this might be someone that throws a baseball. Still using a method of training through the full range of motion can lessen injury risk and most likely carries over to their sport better. All right, cool. So we have a new way of training that might help us maximize hypertrophy, but how do we actually implement this into our workouts? Well, there doesn't seem to be a lot of research on this topic still. So I want to bring up two key factors that I think you should take into consideration when deciding on how to mix this into your programming. The first is gonna be the exercise you choose. Some exercises are just simply easier to implement this with, like a dumbbell shoulder or chest press. Since the stretch position is all the way at the bottom of the rep, you'll be able to train closer to failure and then bail out on the weights without risk of injury. Doing this on a bench press could lead to fatigue where you are unable to get the bar up to re-rack. I think another good example of this is a squat where the stretch position is at the bottom of the lift. Meaning if you over fatigue yourself and you're unable to re-rack, you're increasing your risk of injury. A better alternative might be programming a goblet squat specifically to use long length partials on and to add more tension and metabolic stress. Now the second key point to this is when do we actually decide to program it? Now there is a lot of different ways we can do this. If you're gonna do five sets of pull-ups, you can dedicate that last set to just long length partials. But another technique that I think might be best for something like a pull-up is, let's say your max on pull-ups is 10 reps. You hit 10, but you still could most likely do another two or three reps at just half a rep. And then when you're fatigued from a full half rep, you switch to a quarter rep for another two to three reps. This is a way of mixing in long length partials without really dramatically changing your program. All you're doing is simply adding a couple extra reps at the end of a set. Or you can decide to select two or three exercises that you program in throughout your workout that you can train using long length partials. And these can be obviously any exercises you feel comfortable with that you know get a good stretch on that muscle and allow you to fatigue safely. So at the end of the day, my takeaway from this is that this is a new method for individuals really looking to improve hypertrophy. It's gonna be something that I think we're gonna see more and more frequently. So definitely mix it in, give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what exercises you're gonna be doing long length partials with in the comments. I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you did, hit that like button, consider subscribing. YouTube thinks this video right here is gonna be your favorite of my content. So feel free to give that a watch and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.